Greetings, fellow Earthlings, and welcome to Tales from the Hoop, a podcast dedicated to diving into the weird, wild, and wacky stories from basketball history. I am your host, Ricky Freck, and today I'll be telling a story about a legendary NBA player to my brother. Blazer Dave. <laughs> Is that your legal name now? Uh, Did you change it in the last for two today. weeks? Okay. We're going we're gonna to have a different name every time. Okay. All right. So today I come to you with a story... That I know, I know, unless you have gone to the deep, dark holes of YouTube, which is probably the only way people are seeing this video, I'm sure, uh, you probably don't know anything about this person. But before we begin, I want to ask you, who do you think is the worst player in NBA history, in your opinion? That's good. I have a programming note before we dive into our topic. Okay. Um, so last time we talked about nicknames, you uh -huh. said that you may want one. Or had always thought about it. So we came up with a couple. Who did? Oh, you and your wife? I just want to run them over. I just Was want to it run Sean? Down the list. Not Sean. The team, the team, or the team. The fee, the viewers don't know Sean. Hopefully they never have to. But <laughs> hello, Sean, if you're watching this. Um, One of the people who might actually watch it. So uh, anyways, uh, mostly me. These are mostly mine. And then I asked my wife and our... Uh, the kid that we babysit a lot, he oh, is nine God. for reference. So we've got uh, Sticky Ricky, which was the yeah. favorite. Everyone okay. is a big fan of that one. Ricky Stanicky. That's just a movie. Stanicky, what up, man? Yeah, but it's good. It's not a nickname. I, I like it. I like it. Okay. Um, Michaela's, what, her, Michaela is my wife. Uh, Rikayla was her uh, suggestion. Right. That yep. seemed that sounds like we're dating, so I don't like that at all. Because... Well, she thought you could go together like Rick and Mick, you know. Uh huh. Yeah, sure. But I guess Rick is just the sh anyways. <laughs> um. So Rex, our nine-year-old special guest, uh -huh. Rizzy, was what Rizzy? he thought we should okay. go with. He, he thinks Riz is something you want to be associated with. Yeah, um, I do have a lot of Riz. I've been told. Yeah, Rizzy. <laughs> can I can I tell you that? And you, I don't know. You might believe this. You might not, because I know like. Never mind. I don't want to get into our family history, but um, I, I have had a weird number of people in my life uh, from all all places call me their spirit animal, and I don't know what that means about me. Mm -hmm. But that's yeah. happened. That's been said to me at least ten times in my thirty five yeah. years in this earth. I and, think I could unpack that. <laughs> okay. At least my interpretation. Yeah. Is that you're a very unapologetic. So I think there's a lot of people that are like, like they probably would rather just be binging reality TV or playing video games, uh -huh. like, like more than the average person does. But they also see those things as kind of maybe nerdy or something silly. I, I, I disagree with them. I do uh -huh. those things a lot. Uh -huh. But you're pretty unapologetically fine with just doing those things and owning it and saying like I'm the cool one and you're not. And there's ve true. there's That's something true, yeah. very confident about you and your personality and your ability to not care at all about what mm -hmm. other people think about you that I think most people don't, especially in our family. I, again, not to like throw everybody's dirty laundry out there, but think a, there are a, a decent few that care a lot about other people think. Oh, okay. And they're like, Oh, Ricky really just DGAF. It's true. I, yeah, I do. I do not, I do not do that. Okay. So anyways, back to the well, well, last oh. one, last one. Last oh, okay. One. Sorry. I apologize. For those who don't know, it's Ricky Dwayne Freck is the full name. Correct. Yeah. And we thought do do might be a good, mm, don't uh, like that. Dwayne don't, don't love nickname. that one. Do do. You know, they did when, when we were growing up, when I was growing up before you came along and ruined everything, uh, right. they did call me R2D2 for a minute uh, because of the I'm the second. So uh, that was terrible. Thing. And then for a while at camp, we used to, we, uh, we used to work at the same summer camp. Um, I tried to get the nickname started because I was co counselor with a guy named Richard and everyone else thought my name was Richard. So I got all the kids to call me Char for a while. I like mm. that. That was fun, but it uh, didn't last. Charred. Yeah, char. Uh, okay, All so right. uh, <laughs> I digress. On that note, who do you think is the worst NBA player of all time? Okay, um, there was a guy 
and I'm I don't remember his name. I'm, it, it might come to me when I'm talking about Mike it. Mike Muscala. No, he's okay. great. I love Mike Muscala. That's insane. Sure. Um, that this guy did play for the Thunder. Jeremy Lamb. No, I love Jeremy Lamb. Um, met Jeremy Lamb. Talked to he him. Retired in person. today. Dang. Dating the podcast. He retired today. R.I.P. Oh, he's still um, alive. He's not dead, ladies and gentlemen. Don't worry. Jeremy Lamb still there. <laughs> I okay. I, I'm pretty positive. I know who it is. You're pretty positive. Yeah. Okay. Uh, he was a backup point guard on Russell Westbrook's Thunder. I believe it was the year after Kevin Durant left, and then maybe even the next year after that. Like I think he played two seasons for the Thunder. Reggie Jackson. Nope. That was way before KD left. Um, Samaj Christian. Oh. And if who I'm thinking of isn't Samash Christian, I'm sorry to Samash Christian, but uh-huh. he, like there was, someone made the statistical case on Reddit that he actually was the worst player in the league based off of his like shooting percentages and his turnover rate. And it was like a historically bad two seasons. Wow. Okay. Where, but like we played him 25 minutes again. Like it was insane. Oh, uh, okay. Um, I mean, we played a lot of terrible people during that time. But... Yeah, like Russell Westbrook and All right. <laughs> Stephen Adams. Anyway, I can't even say that. I like Stephen Adams. Samaj Christian would be my answer. Okay, I think that is a very good answer. I don't. I don't actually have the stats or anything. Um, I just wanted to see who you would say. Yeah, but I do think it has definitely got to be someone who basically no one has heard of, right? Like. Even that guy is probably too good because if he played 25 minutes a night, he's probably too good to be the worst player in NBA history. It's got to be somebody yeah. who barely played at all. Now, today I'm going to tell you a story about a man named Gary Suter, uh, who you have never heard of. I know no, you have never, never heard of him. in my life. Most people here have probably never heard of him. Uh, he was once described in an article as the goofiest person you will ever meet. Uh, now, it is worth noting before we start that Many people, including you, as we just talked about, have likely never heard of Suter, but there was a very popular Reddit thread and then a YouTube video, which you should watch on a, uh, it's a channel called, I believe, I don't know how it's pronounced, Velodius, V-L-V-E-L-O-D-U-S. It's their channel. Uh, let me scroll down because it's in my sources. It is called Gary Suter, the goofiest NBA player of all time, Tales of Sports Foolishness. Okay. It's a very good video. I used it to get a bunch of my sources, like to find where to go look. Um, and he does a very good job. Uh, so with that said, if you would like uh, more, I wouldn't say more in depth, but just more of a look at just his basketball life and not his entire life, definitely worth looking at Velodius's video. And uh, apologies, Mr. Velodius, if I'm pronouncing your name wrong. It's a YouTube channel. I don't know for sure how you say it. Uh, with that all said, let's get into Suter's story. Uh, So Gary Suter was born in Omaha, Nebraska on January 18th, 1844. The six foot nine forward played at Sandia High School in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Uh, A very famous Weird Al song, of course. He was named a unanimous All-State selection as a senior and was the only player from the state to make that year's All-American squad. So, so far, sounding pretty good. Doesn't sound like a bad guy or not a a bad player. Uh, Reportedly, He fielded offers from Kentucky, Kansas State, the modern-day UTEP. I don't remember what it was called at the time, but it wasn't UTEP, but now it's UTEP. Uh, Arizona, Arizona State, Texas Tech, BYU, Washington, Pepperdine, and New Mexico, among many others, but would ultimately stay in state and head to New Mexico. So far, so good. Head coach Bob, not, excuse me, head coach Bob King, called Suter, quote, one of the best freshman prospects he had ever seen. But the young forward was dismissed from the team after his fall semester. Uh, There were several reasons while Suter was forced to leave the program. For one, his grades weren't very good, which is relatively common among basketball stars in any era. However, that wasn't his only issue. And I apologize. I know basketball players are not dumb. In fact, I was looking at a thing today. I know I just talked bad about Westbrook. But uh, he wanted to go to Stanford, had the grades for it, and Stanford didn't offer him, which is a, a crazy choice from Stanford because you got to bring in anybody you can. Yeah, That's- I also think there's a fairness to, like, I don't think a lot of athletes have bad grades because they're not smart. I think they yes. have them because it doesn't matter if they have good or bad grades. 
Ben Simmons uh, famously never went to class just because he was there to play basketball and get drafted. He did not care. So yeah, it's, it's a different sport, but my, my, I think my, maybe my all time favorite quote, or at least all time favorite tweet that's ever been tweeted was when uh Cardale Jones, Cardale Jones, is that his name? He played quarterback at Ohio there is state. A Cardale Jones. He played quarterback at Ohio state. And he tweeted something about like, why do we have to go to class? We didn't come here to play school. And <laughs> that's and, fantastic. And uh, I use that in my review for college football 25 uh, this year. It's a great quote. One of the greatest quotes of all time. Uh, okay. So anyways, back to Suter. And uh, this part, we happen to know very well, uh, given our family history, which again, we won't get into it, but Dave will laugh when I read this part because Suter was a hoarder. Oh gosh. Yeah. <laughs> so what do you think that a six foot nine basketball kind of star, at least in high school, was hoarding. What are your guesses for things he might have hoarded in the 60s, 70s? Oh, 60s. Food, for sure. Okay. I'm, I'm guessing that would be a problem. Dorm uh -huh. room, food is a problem for all. So for a hoarder. <laughs> I mean, sneaker culture wasn't like that would be my first guess. Shoes. But, yeah, but it wasn't in the 60s. Like I can't imagine yeah. that was. Uh, cigarettes. <laughs> Not a bad guess. All right, here we go. He collected pizza boxes. So correct on food. Yep. Uh, Beatles vinyl records. When you say collected, like he was just hoarding. He, he wasn't actually... <laughs> collecting pizza boxes he was just not cleaning up after himself i mean maybe like a little bit of column a and column b i don't know i wasn't there <laughs> okay uh, fair enough and he also had every single issue of mad magazine okay great uh, great at one point he was uh, asked to move out of the dorms due to the issue of hoarding and he also didn't really take anything seriously and was often late for practice and study hall still King said, that's his coach, King said after he had left that he would be open to taking taking him back if he, quote, clears up his many problems. Uh, instead, Suter would then hop on the road and hitchhike to Wichita Falls, Texas. There, he, uh, he called up Midwestern State University coach Dennis Van Zant and asked for a tryout. Uh, just like out of the blue, came up there, said, hey, can I try out for your basketball team? Uh, I'm six foot nine. Uh, with his size and skill, he relatively easily made the team, but he had to sit out a year due to transfer rules, which I don't know if you know that, but that used to be a big thing. Like you couldn't, you had to skip a yes. year for transferring. Uh, wild, wild what we live in now compared to back in the day where you just could transfer whatever you want. Do whatever you want. Uh, as a junior, Suter played in 11 games and averaged a double-double with 15 points and 10 boards. During his final season, he was even more productive, dropping 22 points and 15 boards a night. However, given that he was playing at the D2 level in the 60s, he was not drafted in the 1969 draft. So, so far we have a guy who's like pretty decent, you know, like a, I don't know, like a, a, Dennis, a, a Dennis Rodman that didn't get drafted, like about that level, I mean, maybe not that level, but like D2, pretty decent, but not, you know, just yeah. tall, not, not like great or anything. Star. Yeah. Um, okay. So he didn't get drafted, um, but... 1970, which I'm, I'll ask if you know why this was a very interesting time for young players hoping to make it in the NBA. Do you have any guesses why 1970 in particularly? Because I know you the don't ABA know basketball. was beginning. And so was there was beginning? two options. Was beginning? Was two options to go. The NBA was beginning? No, was ABA. The oh, ABA. I was like... So there's two leagues to choose from and it was more competitive. Um, so I, hmm, I don't know when the ABA and the NBA combined. It was around that time. You're, but I, so I think the ABA, ABA had been around. But, but they are, combined late 80 or late 70s. Late right? 80s. Yeah. I think you're correct. Um, so they would have formed. And then I, it, think, I, I think they were around in the sixties, but you gosh. are on the right track. You are on the right track because that year the league expanded to 17 teams, mm. adding the Portland trailblazers, Buffalo Braves and Cleveland Cavaliers. Those three teams needed nice. players. And luckily for Suter, those players didn't need to be very good. Uh, so can you get any, any guesses on like players that were playing for the Cleveland Cavaliers in their inaugural season? Have we ever, have I heard of any of these players? Uh, you might have heard of one who I'm actually not going to okay. talk about. 
but Kiki um, Vanderway. Oh, good guess, but I think that's a little too early. Uh, Alex English. Oh, he played for the Nuggets. I don't know if he played for the Cavs. Um, also, I think too early. I think he's an 80s guy. Who did the Buffalo Braves become? Uh, I believe that is the Clippers, the modern-day Clippers. I could be wrong on that, but I but I believe it's the Clippers. Um. Okay, this is 1970? Yeah. Earl Monroe. Oh, Earl the Pearl Monroe is a decent guess, but no. I think the only name you probably would have heard of is Bimbo Coles, maybe. Mm, yeah. Um, you dropped him in a video recently. No, <laughs> in a, he in was a in a sport, football video. He, I was playing Sporkle. And he was in a Sporkle. Oh, I also, is, yeah, I did also talk about him in a college football video uh, mm. for, one, for some reason. Because um, I have a guy in my college. Hey, football. shout out to the college football series. I'm loving it. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's the series I get drunk and record. So, um, <laughs> all right. So anyways, where was I? Oh, uh, luckily for the, luckily for Suter, those players didn't need to be very good. Uh, I mean, the Cavs won 15 games that season and were led by guys you've never heard of like Walt Wesley. And <laughs> this is, I don't know how this is a real name. John Johnson. Mm. <laughs> Thanks <laughs> parents. The most generic name of all time. <laughs> Uh, the team started that season losing 27 of their first 28 games and reportedly, this is crazy, had to buy packs of sports cards to use as scouting reports because they were so cash strapped. So if you can imagine going and buying like a pack of pops to yeah. hope you got Dr. J's card. I mean, I guess not Dr. J because he wasn't in, was he? In, I don't know. Whoever. Someone from Bill Russell. Rick um, Barry. Yeah. Someone like that. To get their cards so you could scout him is uh, pretty wild. Okay. Um, so, uh, sorry. I'm finding my place. There we go. Okay. Suter showed up in Cleveland and played in a few exhibition games for his tryout. In one of the games, he blocked two Connie Hawkins shots, a future Hall of Famer. Yeah. Uh, though it's worth noting that reports from the time made it clear that Hawkins was barely trying. It's also worth noting that... Uh, Suter almost missed the team's first game because he'd fallen asleep on the plane and was late for the second game because, and you're not going to believe this. Any guesses? Um, can't be hoarding related. No. Is it drugs? No, he was also sleeping, um, but a little different this time. Uh, it gets better though. See, Suter had scheduled his alarm to wake him up this time. But when he jumped out of bed after his alarm went off, he slammed his head into the door into the door jam and knocked himself out cold. Yeah, yeah, fair. So when trainer Ron Culp finally found him, he was passed out on the floor of his hotel room. Um, Suter would play in 30 games that year, averaging 14 minutes and 1.4 points a night on 35% shooting from the field. Uh, not great for a center. His team also didn't really like him, and head coach Bill Fitch made it a punishment that whoever committed the most turnovers would have to room with him. <laughs> <laughs> well, I love this. Uh, it's, it's good you love it now because it's gonna it's gonna take a turn. I should say. I mean, could you imagine? So shooting thirty five percent is. I feel, I just feel like horrible. Like you could just jack in them up. I feel like you could at least get one one point five points. That's nuts. It's not good. On like any level of minutes. You should be able to get one bucket a game. Yeah, it's not good. It's uh, it's really bad. <laughs> it's really, really bad. Especially for a six foot nine center in 1970, back when like being six foot nine was like pretty much your only requirement to playing in the NBA. Right. Um, Definitely yeah. a top uh, 10 percenter player. Yeah. If yes. not 5%. Yeah. Um, but unfortunately he and also what's wild is i didn't really put this in there but he was like known as a mid-range jump shooter in high school and college like he was he had like a good shot mm. but in the nba uh, there's not again like it's tough because the Cavs sucked and like he's a nothing person so like finding stuff out about him is very difficult except for yeah. like the funny stories right yeah so i don't know you know like i don't know a shot chart distribution I don't know his effective field goal percentage. I don't know his rebounding rate. You know, that kind of stuff is kind of hard to come by. Fair enough. Uh, so it makes it a little tougher, but yeah. He, well, uh, so he, calves. Not a good player. Not a good player at all. Uh, see, I keep, 
<laughs> I got to get better at talking to you and then finding my spot. Um, he was nearly cut at halftime of the first game, Be- but eventually he talked the Cavs into starting him after he called the coach like at 2 a.m. every night for weeks saying he should be in the starting lineup. In fact, it wasn't just him that would call the starting li- call the coach. Uh, it's been reported that he would call the coach claiming to be a fan and demand that he got more playing time. <laughs> so he was pretending to be another person and uh, p- pulling a, what's that, what's that movie? The Master of Disguise, except not very good at disguising his voice. Oh, big fan of the Turtle Club. The Turtle Club? Yeah. <laughs> Suter was a big fan of Turtle Club. Um, so he finally got that start, right? And at game time, Suter was not in the huddle. Uh, so the coaches went to the locker room thinking he might have locked himself in the locker room. Mm. Uh, that sounds weird, of course, but he'd actually done it earlier in the season. He had accidentally locked himself in the locker room and had not made it out onto the court because he Can't was stuck. Can't believe it. <laughs> yep. Instead of finding him in the locker room, Suter was in the stands, in full uniform, mm-hmm. eating hot dogs and chugging a beer. Okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Why not? So, I mean, you know, the, the kind of guy you want on your team, the kind of guy who's going to be a local legend, but probably not the guy the coach wants to put in right. any kind of lineup. Yeah. We're not winning a lot of games with the behavior. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're not winning a lot of games anyways. Uh, that was the end of Suter's time in Cleveland, though he still kept coming to practices and games, and the coach would just throw him out on the street and tell him to leave, and he would just come back. Eventually, he gave up. But he told the coach that he needed... $450 for a plane for a plane ticket for him and his wife to go back to New Mexico. The issue here is that Fitch knew for a fact that Suter didn't have a wife. <laughs> I, was, I was literally thinking, how did he have a wife? This sounds like such an idiot. I can't imagine. So what but, do you think Suter did? Uh, oh, called up and faked as the wife. Cl- very close. Very close. Suter then went down uh, to a street that was well known for ladies of the night. Heck yes. And My asked guy. them who would, if he gave them $50, yeah. who would pose as his wife? I only need 400. And so he found a lady that Fitch said, quote, he must have dragged off the streets and the team had no choice but to give him the money. And so he paid a prostitute to make $400, which is, you know, I mean, that's just good money. That's yeah. smart business. He's a business. Back guy. then, that's a lot of, I mean, yeah. inflation. Inflation. Yeah, I, I don't have my inflation calculator out, but uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, however, his NBA career technically wasn't over. At one point, this is this is just wild. He's putting he him had, out of his misery. <laughs> at one point, he asked a funeral parlor if he could make a private call to a relative to set up arrangements for a death. Uh, a few months later, the parlor got a $700 bill because Suter had been calling every team in the league looking for a tryout <laughs> on their dime. Oh, he just was at a funeral uh-huh. and decided to start calling teams to ask, yes. see if he could. Okay. Yes. <laughs> yeah. He didn't, so, he didn't want to pay the money to call yeah. across the country. Totally. <laughs> I don't know how that works, but... At least he got at least half of that was paid for by the NBA. Ah, uh, true. Yeah, no, I don't think no. he ever paid for any of it. I think he just oh, put it on fair. put it on the funeral that's parlor fair. and left. Uh, Suter did make the 76ers roster in 1973, but was cut before ever playing a game. He would also try out for several other teams around, like not even just in the NBA, you know, in the CBA in Mexico, but he never made another NBA roster. So Suter moved back to Albuquerque to live a quiet, normal life. And that is where we're going to end part one. Not, I shouldn't say end part one. We're going to stop down uh, and we will be back right after this. Um, Okay. So when we last left before our ad read that doesn't exist, I said that he lived a quiet, normal life. Now I want to know, do you believe me? Do you think that is what happened? He said that? That's what I said. Oh, okay. Um... So I don't want to believe that. I want to believe that it gets interesting, but it's more I, interesting, please. His life has been interesting. <laughs> my theory is that this guy, so I'm, I'm waiting to see if there's like a, we know what the problem in his life was, 
But mm. my theory is that he was really stupid. <laughs> and I don't think it goes anywhere. I, I think it's boring and uh I mean I'm sure he tries to be interesting, but I can't imagine that this guy's capable of much. Come on. He's sitting in the stands. Oh, uh, you are gonna regret going. your words and deeds. Uh um, come on. So here's what I have written. So I'm just gonna read He's it. shown me nothing. He's shown you nothing. Sorry. I'm he shook. was eating a hot I'm dog. Sh- I'm shook. Uh hot <laughs> <laughs> dog. He's like the Joey Chestnut of the NBA. He's like peak uh, person. Do you think, okay, I'm going to ask you, this is completely off topic, but I just saw this yesterday. People like hyping this up and think it's a big deal. Do you know what the nine by nine by nine challenge is? No. Okay. You go to a baseball game. Every inning, you eat a hot dog and you drink a beer. Does that sound difficult to you? I mean, it sounds disgusting, but yeah, easily. Yeah. I mean, so easily. easily. So easily. Yeah. Baseball. I, yeah. That's stupid. I also think that I could relatively easily eat a hundred chicken nuggets in one sitting. People always are like, oh, it's so hard. I think I could do it. Yeah. That's another one where I'm uncomfortable, but I'm doing it. Oh, I like, think I would love it every second of it. Yeah. 20s like, I still need a Big Mac or something. So... <laughs> I can stretch to 100 for sure. Yeah. You would have to stretch, yeah. Okay, so uh, a baseball game is three to four hours? I would guess so, yeah. And they do a seventh inning stretch? I mean, yeah, I'm like <laughs> feeling... Do. What do you think happens in a seventh inning stretch? <laughs> I'm just not just kidding. Um, it's, it's like a 40-minute long They have Pilates a yoga class. session in the stands. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's... That's so, uh, like it's an uncomfortable Uber ride home, but it's, <laughs> it's like Saturday. It's fine. It's a Saturday. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I agree. I agree. For me, it's a Tuesday, which is a joke. Say, we, they, come to OKC. Let's get, let's knock out a nine by nine by nine for the, what are they called now? Are they just the uh, Dodgers now? Right. So we were the Dodgers. So we dropped, we, are, we lost our affiliation this year. We are really the, the OKC baseball team. As wait, we so wait they don't for, have a they don't have a feeder? We're waiting for uh I think uh, we're still I think like this year we're still with the Dodgers. Yeah. But we're like in the process of finding a new team. Interesting. I didn't know that. Cuz there was there was like a big Dodger player in our game recently. Yasiel Puig? No, he's retired. Yeah. Mookie Betts. I think it was. Well, Mookie Betts? No. This is the one was it Shohei? Uh, Dodger player I can think. Was it Shohei? Oh, yeah. oh, I forget about Shohei. Shohei was an OKC. It's player. always like injured pitchers that are coming back. Yeah. With, yeah. Yeah. Yes, I've been to many. What do they used to be? The, oh. Um, the Barons? No. That was the hockey team. Hmm. The I've been to many teams when they were with the Rangers. I've been to many of those games. Yeah, I was going to say it was Rangers, but we weren't called the Rangers. I don't know. I don't know. It doesn't matter. Okay. So here's what I have written uh, about him being normal. His, I said, wait, did I say normal? You should know by now that that word isn't in Suter's vocabulary. Soon after moving back to New Mexico, Suter was arrested over a $175 shoplifting accusation. <laughs> sure. Uh, now we are going to get into some dark places relatively soon. So a warning okay. for uh, like violence and like, sexual abuse and uh drugs uh so warning for all that stuff is coming up um the jails in albuquerque were so crowded that Suter was instead sent to the penitentiary penitentiary of new mexico now i don't assume you know a ton about the history of the penal system of new mexico but Suter also just so happened to start his incarceration eight days before the 1980 new mexico state penitentiary riot oh okay <laughs> so on great eight, timing on a uh, february 2nd 1980 the most violent prison riot in u.s history started in new mexico oh, oh no how long was he in for for shoplifting um he i don't know how long his his it was a was. it was a very short sentence it was speaking. yeah it wasn't super long um, I mean, could you imagine just the horror of being like a the least of the criminals? <laughs> the least of the, yeah, 
And then you <laughs> are a part of the largest ride ever. Yeah, all this happened because he stole $175 worth of stuff. Right. It's um, a yeah. nothing burger, and he's just getting yeah. rioted. Yeah, I mean, that is, I don't know how much money that is in like today's dollars. I would assume it's probably like oh yeah, $500 inflation. probably with yeah. inflation. Like it's I think it's like 10000 No, it's not 10000 Sorry. I'm sorry. You're the money man. Inflation joke. You're crazy. Hey, oh, with no, because Biden inflation, inflation. Because of Biden inflation. I I see what you're doing. Yeah. Uh okay. Sorry. I've been I'm too um literal because of people getting mad about inflation on the internet for no reason. <laughs> uh okay. Inmates took complete control of the prison and 12 officers were taking hostage. On top of that, several inmates were killed by other prisoners with even a few being tortured and mutilated because they were no known informers to the police, not police to the, uh, the guards. Yeah. Um, in total 33 inmates were killed and more than 200 were treated for injuries. Fortunately, none of the officers were killed, but they did suffer serious injuries. Here's where it gets dark from beatings and rapes. Um, on top of that, even more inmates would later die of drug overdoses after raiding the prison pharmacy and just like go and ham, just like I'm going to get all the drugs because mm, yeah. I have the time. Might as well. um, now you might be worried about our boy Gary and you would be right too. Uh, despite being one of the, the lower men on the totem pole, he fortunately did not die in the riots, but he was beaten with a metal pipe. Uh, he suffered lacerations contusions and fractures and claim that his leg was permanently dana damaged Souter would later, later sue the state and won due to the prison. That was the first thought I had. He's definitely getting money out of this somehow. Yeah, He's yeah. figured out a way. Yes. Uh, one Albert Jerome Romero pleaded guilty to assault to assault against Souter and was sentenced to 18 months in prison. Unfortunately for Souter, once he got out of prison, things did not get much better. <clears throat> Can't believe it. <laughs> Uh, one of the things that I didn't mention earlier, because I felt that it would fit better here, is that Souter had a gambling problem mm. that began as early as his college days at New Mexico. Uh, the, the, it's the most obvious. I didn't mention it earlier. <laughs> it's ever happened. Um, I know I said several things led to him being kicked out of school, but the final straw came about when he caught when he was caught hustling at a local pool hall wearing one of the coach's letterman jackets that he had stolen earlier uh, over his life. He had become known. So he has become, he has became known as something of a pool shark in New Mexico and Texas. And would then go bet most of the money he'd made playing billiards. This would unfortunately lead to his early death. Hmm. Uh, see around 1981 Suter was playing craps against a local businessman. Suter won the game and won $2,500 and a diamond ring. But the owner balked and took out a pistol and shot at our guy. You'd think this might've led to Suter stopping gam gambling for good because he, you know, was nearly killed <laughs> once. Um, but he kept it no up. Way. <laughs> this guy does not understand action and consequence at all. <laughs> that is very, yeah, you, you hit it on the money. You nailed it at one. Um, but eventually, or but Suter would keep it up and eventually would allegedly run up a debt with Gary Randall Hoxie and John Walters in Rio Rancho, New Mexico. The two men then lured Suter to the bank of the Rio Grande River, telling him they wanted to have a dice game. So he was already in debt and he, they said, hey, let's go gamble some more, buddy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, however, their intentions were much more sinister. The three men got into a heated argument over Suter's supposed de debts and Hoxie shot Suter in the hand, chest, and head with a 375 Magnum. They then left him there to die. Suter was only 37 when he was murdered. The next morning, Suter's body was found by two duck hunters. Luckily, Hoxie was arrested in Albuquerque soon after when he tried to pawn off Suter's jewelry. In 1985, the man was sentenced to life in prison and Walters was given probation after testifying against Hoxie and pleading guilty to tampering with the evidence. And that is the story of Gary Suter, one Gary of the Suter. wackiest NBA players of all time. And unfortunately you know, someone who did not learn from his mistakes. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I don't mean to generalize based on area, 
But back in those, the, back in the olden days, yeah, uh, Rio Rancho. I mean, that's just how we settle business. So business. I'm not surprised. I mean, it had to happen to everybody at, at some point back then. It had to happen to some everybody. Yeah. I mean, Rio Rancho has got to be a hundred years, uh, in the past, stuck in the past. Okay, have so you been to Rio the, Rancho? If it was the seventies, I've driven through there. Really? Okay. Oh, it's a, it's a town. <laughs> I've never, I've never been, I never heard of it before this. Yeah, it's, it's out there, baby. Um, <laughs> I, I, I'm sure it was a, a literal like six shooter revolver that that they shot. <laughs> <laughs> there was a tumbleweed in someone or a piece of tumbleweed in somebody's mouth. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Okay. So, so you've been, you've been through it. Is it like a yeah. big town or is it very no. small? I mean, it's like, does it have in, a saloon with the, with the saloon Mexico. doors? <laughs> it's not like a, no, it's not a, I mean, there probably would be one somewhere. Also, I drove through in 2017, 18. It was, you know, it, 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 it's like a, no, uh, uh, it it feels like one of those small towns you drive through in Arkansas or Oklahoma, but like in the desert. Okay, and so it's just kind of eerie. You know how it's a little eerie in Arkansas, where you're like, "Who's living up into those trees back there?" I don't, I don't want to drive down that driveway. That, this is like you can see everything for. That you know, is, so. you know, that it, like people. And this is probably also true in New Mexico. People are always like, Oklahoma is really boring, right? Because, you know, there's not a lot to see. There's no trees. But at least you know, like, where the danger is coming from because you can't see from so far away. Yeah. So I guess that is, like, one thing Oklahoma and New Mexico have going for them. It's like <laughs> yeah, one thing. Finally. You could see those tornadoes coming from miles away. <laughs> um, but, yeah, that is the end of our story. You have anything you want to say to you yeah. guys, Mr. Gary Suter? Yeah, one question. Was Gary Suter the worst basketball player ever? Or was he fixing games on purpose oh, okay. to try to pay off his gambling debts? I don't have any evidence to say that's true or false, but I definitely think like the facts fit. Yeah, I think he's, he's an idiot. <laughs> he's definitely highly possible. <laughs> Maybe we need to answer my own question that this guy is just trash in all facets. Um, yeah, but he's, you know, a very interesting dude. Definitely a lot of weird stories about him. Uh, definitely, you know, I think it's, it, it is so wild that these, you know, uh, so many of these things just like overlap, right? Like that's the thing that was crazy to me about it is I started, I read about his or watched the video about his story. And then I was like, okay, I'm going to look into this guy. And then I was like, wait, he was in prison with, with the most violent prison riot in U.S. history. Like, how do these things overlap? I think that's always so interesting in stories. My like, guess is he started it, and like he initiated, <laughs> he, started it. he initiated gambling debt with someone, <laughs> and someone like he was probably the first person stabbed for sure, and then it just went from there. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, I mean, I could see it. I could definitely see it. He's definitely there the was kind of there guy. was a Cavs fan in jail oh, with him. No. So he gets stabbed and then oh, the Cavs no. fan jumps on the other guy. He was playing pool against some Cavs fan and 100%. They got mad at each other. Okay, and he stabbed with the pool stick, just like broke it in half and just right yeah, into Yeah, I don't think it was Does that happen in a movie? I don't think they have pool cues in prison penitentiaries. You don't think so? No. They I don't have they probably, anything I, that's like. I think they probably have pool, and like, but it's the balls are like not as hard, and the it's like made out of fiberglass, not fiberglass. What's something that's really strong that, that wouldn't hurt? Mm. Is there any, is there is there an element a plastic mm. stick? I bet you. I, I bet. Know. I bet like good. If you if you're on good behavior, you can go play pool or foosball. Prison foosball has got to be fun. I bet foosball makes more sense. I get, well, I guess you could. Break that thing, thing off. off. Yeah. Think about how strong those guys are. They don't have anything to do. Just rip that thing off there and beat you with it. You getting beat by three little men on a stick. There's a, we can cut this, but there's a movie. Cause if we don't get the movie, it's going to look really embarrassing. But the, the guy takes a shirt and ties it around a 45 pound weight plate and then starts swinging it. You know what I'm talking what? about? What? No, no, that's incredible. I'll find. I'll figure out what movie it is in them too. He he. So like like it was like a flail, 
like he knows that some guys are coming to I forgot why he's in jail. Also, it's 45 pounds. Someone puts a hit on him. And and he sees that they're coming to do the deed. And so he's out, he's out on the weight bench and he just takes his shirt and wraps it through the middle of the thing and then just starts. Then he there's a scene where he puts it on the guy's face like a smashing motion. Like it's, a curb stomp type of thing. I, I don't know the movie, but the scene's so great. Hold on. Are, I, I got to ask though. Are you serious? He's swinging a flail a 45 pound weight as a flail yes how who you, who is the actor is um it, um i mean it's got to be somebody huge is it arnold schwarzenegger is it terry cruz that's so I'm much weight that is to, to just swing i mean 45 pounds is not a lot like generally but to be swinging it around your head that is so much weight you have to be so. Um, I mean, it's a movie. It's not a. Okay, I'm aware, but I need to be able to suspend my disbelief. That's the point of a movie. If something is <laughs> happening that is like completely illogical, and he's not like a super, like if it's Thor, yeah, sure, I believe it. He's a superhero, <laughs> but if he's supposed to be a normal person, what are we doing? Is it the mountain? It could. It be was. Thor. I mean, he was Thor buff Bjornson. for sure. He was. He was a big guy. Ooh, it could be Vince Jones. No, what's his name? Vinnie Jones. Vinnie Jones is big. Eddie, Eddie Jones. Vinnie no, Jones. Eddie Hall. Eddie Hall. Eddie Hall is yeah. huge. If he was doing it, I would believe it. I'll, I'll figure it out. Okay. Yeah, you could send it to me later. Okay, so... Or we can uh, add it to right now so that we, as we're talking over it. Oh, yeah. I will definitely add... I'll add the... And, and dub in that I said the movie correctly. I won't do that. I will just put the yeah, movie I know. up. I know. Um, okay, so really quickly, sources, as I said at the top... Velodius's video, Gary Suter, the goofiest NBA player of all time, Tales of Sports Foolishness is a very good video. And then also going off of his stuff, I got a bunch of article links, or not links, but like found articles to go look at in the Albuquerque Journal, Times Record News, Arizona Republic, Wichita Falls Times, Akron Times, and the Cincinnati Inquirer. And so that is going to wrap things up. We will be back next time. I'm very excited about the next episode. I think it's going to be something that uh, you might have actually heard of this time. So that's good, or at least part of it. Um, because so far you have not All heard right. of any of these stuff. Even yeah, Daryl right. Dawkins, which is amazing. Yeah, that's my bad. That's my bad. Uh, but Shout yeah, out Velodius. So, Velodius. Anything else you want to say before we exit out of here? A-L-B-U, Kirky. Oh, okay. <laughs> On that note, uh, see you later.